Hey, and welcome to video number six, which is content is key and types of content to use. What I recommend that you do is to avoid sticking with one type of content. And what I mean by that is there are different types of content in different, different forms, if you understand what I'm saying here. So think about it. You've got text, you have videos, you got audios, you have other different types of content. PDF files, Word doc files, basically in different types of formats. And some tend to appeal to different types of people. Some people prefer to just read. Some people prefer to watch videos. Some people prefer to just listen. So as you know, there are three different types of learners. There's kinesthetic, there's visual, and there are auditory. So certain people like certain things. And guess what? If you provide all three scattered in a longer post, then more likely somebody is actually going to stay on your website. Now, keep in mind though, of course, the content is key. So you wanna have a balance of mixing all the content together, but also having really good content. You don't wanna just put a bunch of gibberish, a bunch of gibberish images, gibberish text, and video together and assume that it's going to convert or people are going to stay on your site, right? You want to provide a balance. You have good content, plus you have an array of different mixture of content. And that way you're able to reach different types of people. Now, I'm going to actually show you some testings that we have done to show you that actually videos tend to be better in terms of stick rate and engagement rate if done correctly and are proven to have a higher stick rate. So you can actually keep people on your site for about 10, 15, 20 different minutes just actually watching your videos. Now, when you have text, you wanna make sure that you have text and images. If you can't do video, that's fine. Just stick with images and text, but make sure that the article is long enough so that people actually stay on your site. Or if you do do video, then make sure that you have some text that surrounds the video. So if somebody doesn't really want to watch the video, they can read the text. But if they're interested in the video and the content is good, they will be willing to watch the video. So this is really what I wanted to talk about today in this video is to show you that you want different types of content put together. So I want to show you some examples of really good content that has been laid out. So I went on Google, I found this particular site, which is a site with tons and tons of content, and you'll see that somebody could really get hooked on this site because they read into this, they see you know links that link into the inner content, thereby reducing the actual bounce rate. So keep in mind that if you have a one page WordPress site or HTML page and somebody clicks on the backspace, they go back to Google, that's considered a bounce rate, right? So we know that Google probably doesn't actually measure the bounce rate on your, let's say Google Analytics, but they probably can actually analyze the bounce rate from your single page back to Google results. Now, whether they use that or not, we don't know, but we know that bounce rates is a good determining factor for our own site. It, assuming that you actually have a multi-page site. So if you have a multi-page site and you got a high bounce rate, that's probably what that means, that you're not converting as much and people are not staying on your site as much. So with that in mind, you got words here, you got pictures, and the pictures enable people to actually look. Okay, so this could take about five, 10 seconds. And then they actually read the content and so forth. So as you know, people have a limited attention span. Because of that, you have different arrays of different content. So kind of like a movie, if you watch carefully how people make movies, how they make TV commercials and things like that, they don't stay on one frame or one angle more than you know a few seconds. You notice that every second there's a switch and a change in different angles. So same kind of concept here. So you have content, you got content, you got images, content, images, content, images, content, images, and so forth and so forth. Plus, they have, if this is a WordPress site, I don't know. If this is a WordPress site, this is really, really cool. 
but it says related posts. You might also like all these other posts. So if somebody really likes the content, then guess what? They're going to click on one of these other posts and they're going to get hooked on your site. So they also see related posts on the site as well. Now, you notice a lot of these posts tend to have like 15 top things, 20 top things, or 101 top things, or 7 things, 10 things, and so forth. That's because when people see that, they're going to want to look at all 10 things. And that's going to take time. That's going to take 5, 10, 20 or so more minutes. And then they're going to see something related, and then they're going to want to go to that other post. So you get what I'm saying here? You want to have a different mixture of posts. I don't see a lot of videos on these posts and pages here, but there's a lot of images. So if you want, another thing you could do is take a video that you created. You could either do this yourself or outsource it. And you can actually take screenshots. So let's say, for example, this particular video that I am teaching you. You could turn this into a screenshot, step-by-step -step screenshots, show people exactly what to do. But turn that video so that they can watch the video if they want to watch it step-by-step. -step. Or somebody that doesn't like videos, they can read it and see the screenshots. So you're appealing to many different types of learning styles, the visual, audio, and kinesthetic. And you're appealing to all three. And because you're appealing to all three, you're able to get all three different types to actually enjoy staying on your site. Now, I want to show you something really, really cool. There are other methods that I'm going to show you, like pagination, and that comes into actually organizing your content and navigation. But in that, you can actually keep people on your site for longer periods of time by breaking up the content. So I'm actually going to show you different ways of pagination. But for now, let's just talk about the content. Now, let's let me show you a video that I actually own. And this particular video on YouTube, you can actually see the retention rate. So you can actually see how long somebody watches this particular video. So as you can see, this is a 17 minute video. That's pretty long, right? Most people are not going to stay for a 17 minute video. But as you can see, if the video is done correctly and you're constantly giving them really good content. In fact, this is a video that I created that has a lot of educational content that shows them statistics, how to do what I'm doing kind of thing. But as you can see here, it starts around this point and it, it looks like a good amount of people actually stay up until this point and then they drop. So you even though people drop around the 16 mark, the fact of the matter is that people, most of the majority of people stayed up until the 15 minute mark and then they left. So that means that people stayed for 15 minutes just to watch the video. But imagine this, imagine if I had five different videos that are 10 minutes each. Most likely, if they are in a series, for example, like this series here, they are most likely going to stay on the site for longer periods of time, right? So in that case, you have more people staying for a longer period of time versus actually bouncing off your site. So videos in themselves, you found that there's a higher engagement and higher stick rate. So I wanted to show you this so you have an idea of different routes you can take, different types of people you can appeal to, but yet at the same time increase your stick rate and decrease your bounce rate. So there you go.